Okay, next little job is this fella. Um, 115 amp power. There you can see. Whatever that means, 80 cycles, all da da da. But it's a leisure battery. I've made a little. Um, you can see it. There's a tray down there. Made it out of aluminium. And I basically just sort of used threaded rod. If you look uh, down there, you can see the uh, threaded rod. It just goes into some existing uh, bolts down there. And then. Um, yeah, just sits nicely there. So I've got to get a strap just to go over here and hold that in. Um, but yeah, leisure power. So next thing I need to do is uh, set up this um, split charge kit. So basically, it's uh, like it, it takes the power from here when the when the van's running, um, and then when you turn the van off it sort of isolates the starter battery so that you can still start it up if you're out and about um, yeah so you're just running off that bad boy that's the plan I'm going to go and fit it now hopefully so I'll update you with any crazy madness that happens ground cable So here's the plan so far. Negative terminal here. Uh, I've got a little clamp thing that goes on there. I'm gonna run the cable behind here. Uh, I've taken this 14 mil nut off of that, off the strut. Um, just gonna clean up the, uh, the paintwork and all that off it. And then that'll be our ground point, hopefully. So any nut and bolt will do it really, but that one looks like a nice meaty one. So I'm gonna give that a go. There you go, got that in there, obviously you need to do that up, but that's sort of rooted around the back and then I'm just doing this uh, nut up to uh, make the connection to the chassis, the ground, whatever, and then that will give us our negative. So after I've done that, I'm going to tighten that up, tighten that up somehow, probably whatever way, um, and then I'm going to do me positive which is a bit more complicated because we've got the uh, a relay so as you can see it cuts in 13.3 so it'll start charging the leisure battery at that and it will cut out isolate leisure battery at 12.8 volts so basically when you start the car it will charge the leisure battery when you stop it won't these are 100 amp fuses that fuse will link things just to protect everything basically that's it. So I'm gonna crack on with that. Right, so quick update. I've got the battery in. I still haven't strapped it down yet. That's the next thing to do. Got my uh, positive connected, ground connected. Ground just goes around there and onto that stud there. I did notice there's also a little ground stud just down there as well. Could use that, but I've got quite a bit of lead on here, so it just gets rid of that. Um, this goes up here. I haven't fixed this yet. That's gonna be mounted probably up there somewhere. Um, it's got a 100 amp fuse in it. That goes along to, from from the leisure battery over to here. I've got like a temporary fix in here again. Into the uh, the outgoing side of this. And then the incoming side of this goes up around there. Again, I haven't fixed this yet. But that's got a 100 amp fuse in there. Goes around here, that's connected to the battery positive, the starter battery positive. And then this has got a little ground somewhere down there, somewhere. Um, what I might do is actually just put that straight on that battery, it might be better. This battery was at 12.65, this one is at like 12.8. So when I start it up, this goes up to about 14-ish. Um, and then when this relay sees that that's at 14 volts, it opens, oh, sorry, it shuts actually, closes the circuit. And then it goes through here and starts charging that. When I stop the car, or the van, the alternator stops running. So this drops back down from 14, below sort of 12.8, which is that. Um, that opens that switch, or the relay. So then this is isolated from that. So it's basically just a gate for electricity. When it's running, it shuts and it runs to this. And when, it, when the car's stopped, it opens, 
and isolates itself. So next thing to do is I'm going to get the fuse board, fuse board, fuse thing, holder thing, um, and I'm going to get that connected to here somehow, um, and probably run that inside, and then I'm going to change some fuses from that battery, the power from that battery, which is inside the uh, inside the car, um, like the lights and the blinds and that, and I'm going to switch them over to run off this one this battery that's the plan so I'm gonna crack on with that now right so this lead that came with it was actually like far too long what I said in the other one uh, I think it's designed for like vans that run it all all the leisure battery and all that in the back um, so I didn't need the whole lot but I had to chop a little bit off because I needed about that much um, in the front and it had an eye crimp on it so this ends just bare now but also I'm gonna put a 75 amp fuse maxi fuse uh, running out of the ledger battery to feed the um, fuse board this is the fuse board it's uh, looks like that take the cover off negative post there or ground so you run all your grounds to the circuits on these and then all your positives on these and then you just put your blade fuse in there um, and basically that will sort of sit like that and power the uh, I think it's like a little buzz bar track thing in there and that will run all these circuits there basically um, yeah that's it so I'm going to start doing that now but this is going to be a 75 amp fuse the other is a 100 amp fuse so if something goes wrong it should just take this fuse first sort of segregates it a little bit so anyway, I'm going to cut this, like so, so one end of this is going to go on the battery, the other end needs to join onto that, so I'm going to have to get a bit creative I think, so I'll strip this down, the world's bluntest cutters. This would be a lot easier with a standing knife, but one's miles away. Lucky. Fine, I'll get the standing knife. So that is going to sit in there like so. You can like fill these with solder or you can crimp them down with a crimp tool or you can hammer them or you can mush them in with a pair of pipe grips as long as it holds and it ain't going to come off then I wouldn't worry too much. Um, same with this side. Bosh. Right now obviously I haven't got a uh, crimping tool at home, so I'm going to whack it with a hammer. Now they don't look amazing when they've been hammered but oh, that ain't coming off of there. I'm going to chuck a bit of this on, if I can get it to open. And then that will sit there, I'm going to heat shrink that down, I don't think I'll need all that actually. Let's trim a bit of that off. Better. Heat gun. And then just warm up, shrink to shrink up. Now, tip for you: don't touch that because it's hot. Another tip: when you're heat gunning. Don't keep it in one place, just keep it moving the whole time, otherwise you'll burn your heat shrink. I've done that many times in the past. Um, right, so that's going to be from the battery. Ow, that's still hot. Um, that's going to be from the battery. That 
needs now to be connected to this. So I haven't got any through crimps, obviously. So classic, if you know this channel, if you've been watching it a while, you'll know we love a good bodge. We're gonna join two together. So peel that and then I'm gonna chuck one of these in there and then guess what I'm gonna do beat it again I'm also gonna do this one as well while I'm out there make sure you get all your strands in lovely all right I'm gonna go and hammer those on Done. Done. As always, don't do what I do on this channel. Go and get the right bit. Don't get two eye crimps and bolt them together for Christ's sake. Um, where's my heat shrink gone? Heat shrink. What I'm going to do is find this. Slide this over that. Put that in there. Bolt her down. Right and then, I'm just going to cut that bolt. Obviously I haven't got a vice because, as you know, world's smallest shed. Done. Nice clean cut. And then, this little puppy is going to go up and over that. To be fair, it's probably a bit long that sleeving, but never mind. So I'm just going to shrink that down. go that is how you bodge a joint as in a cable joint but that'd be all right they ain't gonna go anywhere it's insulated it's not gonna touch anything all I'm gonna do is probably get some red tape all the way down there just to keep it color coded and then sort of protect the, uh, the shrink there's a little bit more heat there. Double done. Right, now that is our supply to the fuse board. Able to feed the fuse box wherever that's going to go probably a bit too much but at least we got it and that is going to be fed through found a little hole just under there and put a little bit of grommet strip just around the metal and then uh, get that all mounted and then sort of mount that up out of the way what I might do I've got a bit of this uh, copex stuff around that just to protect that and then that will obviously mount onto there. Bosh. Oh, 
Oh, it's just started to rain. It's not moving anywhere. Just need to get that all fixed up out of the way. Right. Right, so the front is pretty much done. I've uh, run some of this Copex protective stuff over anywhere that looks like it's going to rub or foul anything like just there sort of flopping around in there a little bit because there's nowhere to fix that too so just protected it with a bit of that copex just tidied it up a little bit got that joint which we did in the shed that's there protected by a bit of copex and it's accessible so if it goes wrong i can always get to it fuse obviously still ain't in um this is all sort of tied around there i've made like a little nick in this so that shuts that's it front bit is done so now I've got to figure out where this fuse board is going to go um, I reckon behind here somewhere be easiest to try and get this out some people were uh, Put the fuse board under the bonnet. Um, you, know, you can buy kits so that have got like a little inline fuse board thing. It's like four or five, six, whatever ways. And then you run the cable through, and then you go onto that fuse board over there, and whatever. Basically, swap them over. But I want this inside really. I don't like having fuse boards under the bonnet. Um, just not a fan of it. Plus, it's easy just to get to. I can just obviously reach under and see the lights are on I haven't got to keep popping the bonnet the light goes out you know the fuse is gone nice and easy but first I'm gonna go and have a wee that's better uh, maybe up there somewhere Drilling into the ECU. I could probably fix it to this plate. What do you reckon? All right, I'm going for some self tappers, only short ones, getting mounted uh, to the cover on the uh, ECU. We'll see. Make sure they're short ones and you're not tapping into the uh, ECU. That wouldn't be great. To lose this, I can either lose it or re crimp it. I think I'm going to re crimp it, it's probably the better thing to do. Isn't it? Yep, do that. That's it, it's no going back now. crimped so what I'm going to do with this off cut is I'm going to tape it blue like a neutral even though cars are black but I know what it will be and then I'm going to run that from the ground stud there onto a little ground stud here lovely all the grounds Let's pop an end on this again Check it fits on that stud. Yeah, that fits. Double hammer method. One hammer down. And then give it a whack. And then finish it with some tape. Check it's on there. Parkside socket set, Lidl's best, 10, yes, mash up the place. It's one end, and then this is going to go around the back somewhere, I've left a little bit of excess. And then that is going to go on there. 
Then, I'm going to check my connections, obviously. Tight, tight. And then, let's just touch that. There you go. So, next thing to do is sort this wiring out, make sure it's all nice and tidy and out of the way. And then I'm going to run some cables from that fuse box to this fuse box to separate some of the stuff from normal battery, start battery, onto the leisure battery fuse box. Plan. What a plan. So, I've just been editing that video and uh, it's roughly about three weeks long, so I'm going to cut it there, um, leave that as the leisure battery install, and then the next one, the next video is going to be the loom swap. So, we've got the battery, we've got the fuse board, I'm going to swap the loom next and then we can have some mad electricity off grid. So subscribe, you won't miss the next uh, video then. Thanks for watching, see you there.